Good morning, you guys. So we are going to a national park that's like two and a half hours away from here. And we are running late because we're meeting my mom and Jim. I think Trav is vlogging behind me, but we just got to Whole Foods because we need to get some food and we didn't have time to make food. So we are having to like pick up the already made food at Whole Foods. I filmed you sleeping. You filmed me sleeping? Yeah. Creeper? I was touching you in inappropriate place. <laughs> You're disgusting. All right, you guys, we're gonna get some food. This whole thing is huge and all the stuff is vegan. They have so many vegan options at the Whole Foods like ready-made section. They even have like tofu scrambles and like tater puffs that are vegan. Really cool. Super soaked up my lunch. Oh my god, you guys, I just got so excited. Earth Balance has vegan chips. Look at this. Vegan cheddar chips. There you go, vegan cheddar chips, kettle sea salt chips, vegan sour cream and onion. Oh my god, I literally just felt so excited. Which one should we get? Which one should we try? I almost want to try like all three. <laughs> Maybe we should get this one. I mean, sour cream and onion is probably going to be the best part. Okay, this is what we're going to try. We'll let you guys know what we think. And we are about to check out. Got some food. Got some water. Sort of hike. Foods. We went and got gas in the car, running late as usual. But my mom <laughs> just like sent an email saying, because it's like a specific, it's a national park that we're going to, but it's a specific trail, and supposedly there's like a bunch of them, and we're supposed to be meeting them at this trail. Well, instead of giving us like an address, she gives us like this scavenger hunt of like. <laughs> of like all these things like when you see this yellow tree turn to the left and <laughs> it's like you know that's not what it says but it might as well say something like that because I'm like a 90s kid I have no idea like how to read maps we never like when I was growing up and driving and stuff we had navigation so thankfully my older fiance knows how to read maps and even he's confused with what like whatever they're giving us my mom told me about this national park yesterday because I know some people were confused but my mom has a place in Marina del Rey and then they also have a place up north it's like two what like two and a half hours away from us yeah. so whenever my mom comes up north and stays at their place there we like to go visit them because it's a lot closer than LA is. We're up north now and we're going to this like national park and yesterday she called me and she's like, hey, we're gonna go for a hike if you guys want to come and we're like, yeah. I'm like, how far is it? She's like, told me to look it up on my navigation. It was only like two hours and 15 minutes away. So now we're like finding out that this place is actually way further than that. And for me, I get like really bad anxiety. And my mom kind of, my mom kind of traumatized me a while ago. Like, she took me on this hike, and she's like, "It's not that bad at all." And I suffer from like really bad panic attacks and anxiety. But I was with my, when I'm with my mom, I feel like a lot more comfortable. I thought like I'm gonna totally be fine, no big deal. Well, this hike was like super intense, and it was very long, and I didn't realize. I thought it was like an hour, hour and a half hike. No. It was like a, a three to four hour hike and it was like really intense. My mom was kind of just like leaving me in the dust. She's like, you know, it wasn't like waiting for me and I had a full blown panic attack and I was in by myself on this like trail hike in the middle of like but fuck nowhere. So I get really nervous to go on hikes with my mom because she's like boot camp status. <laughs> she's like, you know, cut up or shut up, what, what do they say? Put up or shut up. Basically, I get anxiety when I have to work out with my mom because she's like super hardcore. So I'm a little nervous, but I look, I looked at my purse and I'm like, oh, it's okay. I have my Xanax. <laughs> so I should be okay. Except for I'm almost out of my Xanax and I need to find a new doctor to prescribe me Z Xanax out here. And I'm always scared to go to new doctors because I feel like people really abuse Xanax and for the people that actually need it, like me, you know, we're the ones that tend to not get it. So hopefully I'll be able to find a doctor to prescribe some to me, especially for my wedding day. Oh my God, I'm definitely gonna need it then. Freak it out. We are on this windy ass road going up this huge ass hill that's gonna take like a really long time. And we are going like five miles per hour because I don't know if you can see or not, but there are bikers taking up the whole lane 
and no, like, I'm not hating on bikers. I, there's nothing wrong with bikers being on the road, that's fine. I mean, you, you know what I mean. Uh, but you can go around the bikers. This person was not going around them, and bikers, you know, sometimes they'll take up, like, the whole lane and uh, not care. <laughs> but when you're on, like, a road like this, you have to, like, have some consideration for the drivers that are going five miles per hour on, you know, in a 30 mile per hour, like, lane. But, like, look how pretty this is. We're, we're moving now because they went around the bikers. But this has taken a really, really long time to get here. So I told Travis, like, this place better be fucking awesome <laughs> wherever we're going right now. Because I'm about getting car sick a little bit. I think the car is getting sick. Like, it would be lucky if it makes it. <laughs> this car is popular biking, cycling area. Yeah, it is. But I think it's awesome. This it's is dangerous. A, this, I think this, this looks is like dangerous. a really fun road for bikers. But, but it's also very dangerous for bikers. Like, are yeah. you kidding like, me? Like, you need to be careful going around these turns. Some people can't see you. You know what I mean? Well, I think, like I said, for a bicycle trail, it looks awesome, but the reality with cars driving Dude, on there's a lot of bikers. Oh, my God. Very dangerous. Look at all these bicyclists. This is insane. I mean, good for them for getting their workout it's on. really windy. But, damn. It's so scary. Like, look at these turns. You can't see around the other side if there's a bicyclist right there. So, a little sketch. You gotta drive careful on these roads. Oh, that's so cool. I love these, like dome shaped, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but do you see the dome shaped house? I always thought those were so cool. Can you imagine what the inside of that house looks like? I always wanted to build one and then my dad was always like, you, you have to get permits in. So a lot of places don't allow you to build houses like that, you know, so kind of crushed my dreams. So we're lost. <laughs> we just had to pull over to try to find out where we are. We have no idea. And this is really confusing, this road and all these different places. And they sent us like very confusing directions. So we have no idea where we're going. So now we're turning around and I'm car sick. I have to pee and poop my pants. So I'm hoping that we get there soon so that, and I'm hoping they have a bathroom. Oh man, where are we? Oh my god, you guys, we finally freaking made it and found them. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, Mom. Kill me! Yes! Wait, is it? It was supposed to be a two hour. <laughs> yeah. well, Mom's like, it's a two hour drive. Look it up. I'm like, oh, it's only two hours away. Four hours later through no. winding ass roads, no service. <laughs> this isn't it. It's down, it's down a ways, right? <laughs> <laughs> now you got another couple miles to go. Yeah. Oh my god. Cut that one. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna have the um, donut party. Donut. In the back. Yeah. Grab your shit and come on over. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh, by the way, these are so good. This is the last place your cell phone will work. Uh oh. I told Travis. I said if we weren't coming here to meet my mom and Jim, I would think that you were gonna like try to kill me and cut me up until a million pieces <laughs> because okay. this is something out of a scary movie. That's funny because just now I said to Jim, we were laughing in the car and. I like, do you know what I'm thinking? He goes, no, but it's funny. And I'm like, we should go find a fire blade somewhere and sit in front of <laughs> What? <laughs> it was getting really cold. Oh, oh, oh. We're just a high quality <laughs> Well, hopefully nobody gets hurt because we have no service on our I phone. Know. So this might be the start of a very good there vlog, you guys. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm remembering on our trip, Jim, I was going to have, have you tell them about. <laughs> what do you think? Which one?
on. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I don't know what they're laughing about. I'm just laughing at how funny she's laughing. What do you think of <laughs> What do you think? Get in there, Jim. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Tell me what you think. The suitcase or the kickstand? Which one? <laughs> I can't. Start with the suitcase. Wow. Your mouth is something that must be really funny, though. What were you guys smoking before we got here? <laughs> Not much of a story, really. What we were, we were about? trying to find the hotel in Paris. It was our last leg of our trip, thank God. He had the big giant suitcase, and he's very rough all the time. He's just rough, and like even his work bag, he like instead of like pulling it gently up the sidewalk, he was like, goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? That's how it's done. So he, he goes through like his work, what do you call him, briefcase, rolling thing, like one a year. It's the bottom of a really I'm nice one. It's not broken yet, right? He hasn't broke it yet. But we bought the brand new suitcase. We let him take the big giant one. And we were trying to find the Hilton after we had already done the train fiasco. <laughs> With the thousand people on the train. Oh, yeah. In my butt. Oh, in my, my butt. God. That was terrible. We Who got was in at your the butt? airport. We were in, uh, we went into, uh, where was that? Charles de Gaulle yeah. Airport? Yeah. Charles de Gaulle Airport. <clears throat> we landed. We retired. We had just come from Crete. And uh, we had all of our all of our bags and everything. And so your mom decided it would be a good idea. And it was a good idea. We would get a train pass, three-day pass while we were there, and this pass would allow us to take the train and the tram and the bus and just everything. So we bought three-day tickets so that we wouldn't have to taxi around, you know, going to save a few dollars. So we went down to get on the train, and when the train pulled up, you could not put any more people on this train. I'm not kidding you. People were, like, bulging out of the train when the doors opened up, and this was the last stop up the airport. And we had to get on that train and take it all the way down to the opposite side of Paris. And we forced our way under that train, and we were squished in there. I mean, we were, it was like sardines, for sure. Huh. And, uh, I don't know, some guy was sticking his in your mom's butt or something. You know, there was, it, was, it was really close quarters, and like closer than you would ever want. You know, French people don't bathe as much as you would like them to. And that was, that was you know, those trains are not air-conditioned. Uh. We were like tired of dragging these bags around, so we decided to take an elevator. So we hopped in the elevator so that we could go up to the next floor, because later to this level, then we went down one. We hopped in the elevator so we could go up to where we're going. We hopped in the elevator, we went up, we got out, we were exactly where we started. You know, because these guys got sit in Europe, zero is the first floor, you know, and one, you know, I don't know, we pushed the wrong button, whatever the hell it was. So we started the whole thing all over again. So it was just getting even more frustrating. So we finally walked out the door. He decided said, to just, help me. Let's just get out of here. Let's just I grab the bag. I grabbed my bag. I, I <laughs> grabbed everything. I was running down the steps with it. And the back of my bag was going bump, 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 down the steps. And I broke the wheel off of my <laughs> luggage. So now my great big giant bag head was, was a three-wheeler. I don't know. I don't know if you ever pushed a three-wheeler. It's one of them, you know, wheel around in any direction. kind of. Well, it doesn't work very good with three wheels. So the rest of the trip I had to suffer with. No, and then it, then it got better because then we, could, we didn't really know. We knew the Helton was in the vicinity and there were a bunch of tall buildings, but we didn't know which one it was. So Jim went to look at the directory and I went to ask someone. He got really upset. Oh, God. And so then that just topped off the, the no wheel on the suitcase. Your mom's idea of getting around is just ask any person <laughs> who's within shouting distance or is not moving where the hell something is. I'm and the just same way. Them. <laughs> And go in any direction. If they told her, lady, just leave your bags here. Go in the little dark corner and bend down. She'd go, oh, well, okay, get some water. <laughs> Finally get to the area where we're going to have our lunch by the lake. And we have to leave our bikes. <laughs> well, it's funny when she tells stories. <laughs> she can't even get it out.
it out. <laughs> so, so he puts the kickstand down and it's in the grass and he's probably thinking it's gonna fall over or whatever. So he takes the with the kickstand and he goes to like pick it up and jerk it down into the into the grass. <laughs> on this asphalt area where everybody's bike is like lined up next to each other. <laughs> have my foot belt and then normally I take my foot belt when I'm walking like outdoors but not for like long periods of time um if I'm going for like a four hour hike I bring my fanny pack I wanted to show you that this sunscreen you can get from Trader Joe's and it's cruelty free it does not test on animals so that's cool because it's Trader Joe's and then also in case you didn't know Hawaiian Tropic is also uh cruelty free no animal testing so yeah, definitely wear sunscreen, even when it's like a day like this, like cloudy and overcast and the sun's not coming out, still wear sunscreen. You guys know my mom um, was diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma and um, sunscreen is very important so you don't get skin cancer. Okay, so wear it. I'm going to have to put mine on right now. Oh, you took a nice shower. Better throw this down. Travis says this, these little things right here with all the wires and stuff is how they make contact with the aliens. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> okay, so now we are rolling up our windows because we are on a dirt road and we are... Oh, babe! No, don't even think about it. Are you serious right now? You don't do that. It says 15 miles per hour. It's a trap! <laughs> Why don't you let me have You guys fun? can't see what he's doing, but he's basically like going really slow and then gassing it really fast. He's like, once we get on the dirt, don't, Travis, please don't, please don't, honey. You know, I'm going to have a full-blown panic attack right now. I don't do well in Everyone cars. settle down. We're going an entire 15 miles an hour. You were going 40 miles an hour around a turn. Road, I was in an awful accident an where I have like serious like PTSD when it comes to that stuff. And as soon as somebody makes me feel very scared in a car, I immediately have flashbacks and I have a full blown panic attack. It's like not good. Travis knows that, but what does he say? Take a Xanax so I can have fun on the dirt road. Like I'm taking a Xanax so you can have fun on the dirt road. Anyways, so we're, a, this like whole day excursion was supposed to be just like, you know, a two or three hour hike. Let's get here. It's taken like all day. It's already two o'clock. And now we're going to go on the hike. Then we have to drive back on these windy ass roads at night, which is gonna be scary as hell. So, yeah, good times. So, of course, I had to poop really bad and use for the bathrooms. Good times. Thank you very much. Two hours? Awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Look how cool this tree is, you guys. So, we made it on the trail. I pooped, Travis pooped. And now we are, uh, I don't know where we are, hold on, but look how pretty this place is. Coast Trail. So supposedly there's a waterfall like two hours up this trail. So that's where we're going. And it's really exciting. I love spending time with like my family and just like catching up with them and talking to them about life and 
I don't know, it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. And being with Travis, like, I don't know, I just love it. This place is gorgeous. I'm gonna have to leave down in the description bar where we are in case anybody's in Northern California and wants to come on these trails that haven't been before. Uh, Cause this is already gorgeous and we just started. Um, so yeah, super excited. Thank you.